Today is Wednesday, May 19th. What to know today about the ongoing Israeli-Palestinian conflict in the Middle East, from the latest violence to a widespread protest. And prosecutors say the police shooting of a black man in North Carolina was tragic but justified. We'll explain the findings and the response to it. Plus, a new recommended age to get screened for the third most deadly cancer in the United States. Why you may be asked to step on a scale before your next flight. And forget video chat as you know it, a 3D video chat booth could be coming. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. Well, the second week of the latest Israeli-Palestinian conflict is taking a huge toll on the region. In fact, it's now being called a humanitarian catastrophe. The Israeli military is still hitting the city of Gaza with hundreds of airstrikes, and Palestinian militants are still firing thousands of rockets across the border into Israel. So far, the fighting has killed more than 200 Palestinians and 12 Israelis. The rockets coming into Israel have mostly hit civilian areas. But Israel says it's only targeting the militant group Hamas to take down personnel and infrastructure that helps the group hurt Israelis. Both Israel and the U.S. consider Hamas a terrorist organization. But the United Nations says civilians, including dozens of Palestinian children, are getting killed by the Israeli strikes as well. And tens of thousands of people have been forced out of their homes. Millions more are dealing with other consequences. Sewage systems have been destroyed and wastewater is flowing into the streets of Gaza. Also, water pipes serving at least 800,000 people have been damaged. And at least 17 hospitals and clinics have been damaged, as well as the only lab in Gaza that processes COVID-19 tests. So today, Palestinians across Israel are on strike in a rare collective protest. And this is shutting down a lot of businesses there since Palestinians make up about 20 percent of the Israeli population. The strike so far has been peaceful in many places, but there has been violence reported in the West Bank. Meanwhile, international leaders are stepping up their calls for a ceasefire. Here in the U.S., officials told news outlets like the AP, President Biden and other American leaders are starting to put more pressure on Israel's prime minister to end the conflict. Biden reportedly told his Israeli counterpart that he could only reject criticism of the strikes for so long. But publicly, the White House says it still supports Israel's right to defend its people. Assuming no deal is reached today, the United Nations General Assembly will meet to discuss the violence more tomorrow. To be continued. It turns out the sheriff's deputies who shot and killed a black man in North Carolina will not face criminal charges. You might remember this story from when it happened last month and set off weeks of protests. Anthony Brown Jr. was shot in his car in Elizabeth City, North Carolina, about an hour south of Virginia Beach. Deputies were executing a drug-related search warrant at the time. Family members who watched body camera footage say Brown was trying to drive away from deputies when they shot him. However, the local district attorney has been investigating and says Brown hit a deputy with his car and nearly ran him over as law enforcement officers told him to get out of the vehicle. And for that reason, the DA says the deputies were justified to shoot him and they will not be facing criminal charges. The Brown family attorneys say the DA calling the shooting justified is both an insult and a slap in the face. And large groups of protesters rallied over the decision last night. It's not a totally closed case, though. The FBI is also conducting a separate investigation. More than 30 million Americans are threatened by historic flooding this week. It's already affecting parts of Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, and Arkansas, following several rounds of heavy rain and thunderstorms. And at least one local official says it looks like a once-in-100-years event. At least five people have died in Louisiana. Hundreds more had to be rescued from their cars or homes. The flooding has also shut down highways and forced people to evacuate buildings. On top of this life-threatening flooding, several cities in Texas and Louisiana are also dealing with the aftermath of tornadoes earlier this week. And unfortunately, even more strong storms are on the way. Rain is expected to drench the south-central U.S. until at least tomorrow. A new CDC study found people in rural areas are getting the COVID-19 vaccine at a lower rate than those in urban areas. The study looked at data showing how many U.S. adults got at least their first dose of a vaccine between December 2020 and April of this year. And it found about 39 percent of people in rural counties had gotten the shot, compared to nearly 46 percent of those in urban counties. The CDC says this can slow down progress toward ending the pandemic since people living in rural counties make up almost one fifth of the U.S. population. So why the difference in vaccination rates? 
At least one possible reason is access. The CDC found people in rural areas who were able to get a vaccine often had to travel farther to get it. But some studies also suggest there's more vaccine hesitancy in rural towns. The CDC is now urging healthcare providers, employers, faith leaders, and more to work together to identify and overcome any obstacles to get people vaccinated in every corner of the United States. All right, we have much more news still ahead, but first, a quick break to thank our sponsor. Ritual is not your typical multivitamin. Its clean, vegan-friendly formula is made with key nutrients, including vitamin D3 to help fill gaps in the diet and in forms your body can actually use. And there are no shady extras allowed. That's why I first started taking Ritual vitamins months ago. Yep, even if I was not partnering with them, I would be taking these vitamins. I appreciate that the company is so upfront about exactly what goes in the vitamins and why, and I can take them with or without food and have no issues. Ritual's fresh-tasting, delayed-release capsules are designed to dissolve later in less sensitive areas of the stomach. They're also convenient. They're delivered right to my door with free shipping each month. Of course, you can start, snooze, or cancel your subscription anytime. And if you don't love Ritual within your first month, they'll refund your first order. Plus, right now, Ritual is offering the Newsworthy listeners 10% off during your first three months. Just visit ritual.com slash newsworthy to start your Ritual today. That's ritual.com slash newsworthy. Heads up to everyone 45 and older. Medical experts say now is the time to start getting tested for colon cancer. Until this week, the standard was 50. But the federal task force that sets this recommendation lowered it this week because of an alarming rise in cases popping up in younger people. In fact, the number of people in their 40s with colorectal cancer has gone up by about 15 percent over the last 20 years. Colorectal cancer can also be called just colon cancer or rectal cancer, depending on where the cancer starts. And overall, it's now the third most deadly cancer in the United States. But experts say it's also one of the most curable types of cancers when doctors catch it early. This official recommendation could help. It allows more people to schedule colonoscopies and other tests without needing to pay out of pocket. The new official age recommendation means insurance companies would have to cover the cost of screenings. The next time you board a plane, you may be asked to step on a scale first. An advisory from the Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, says airlines have to run routine weight and balance checks for their planes every 36 months. But it's not just the machinery that needs to be weighed. The document specifically says surveys of passengers or bags also need to be part of these tests. The airlines use the data to figure out how many people can safely fly on certain aircraft. And the weight estimates keep going up. The average man, plus his carry-on luggage, now has an estimated weight of about 200 pounds. For a woman, the average is about 180 pounds. But the FAA reportedly wants these averages to be more precise. So it now recommends the airlines either ask passengers to step on a scale or simply ask them how much they weigh. However, if this makes you uncomfortable, you don't have to. The federal document says surveys like this should be voluntary and people should be chosen at random. The second biggest bank in the U.S. is making a big change to attract new workers. Bank of America says it will raise its minimum wage to $25 per hour by the year 2025. Plus, vendors and suppliers that work directly with the bank are also required to pay their own employees at least $15 an hour. This new minimum wage will put Bank of America ahead of its competitors. The number one bank in the U.S., J.P. Morgan Chase, set its minimum wage between $16 and $20 earlier this year. Citigroup pays a $15 minimum wage. The latest automaker promising to go green is a luxury sports car brand. Volkswagen-owned Lamborghini says by the end of 2024, every new model it offers will be a plug-in hybrid. This means the new models will combine electric motors and powerful batteries with more traditional engines. Lamborghini plans to spend nearly $2 billion to develop the hybrid fleet, and that's the largest investment the company has ever made. But Lamborghini says it will help them reach a goal of cutting emissions in half over the next four years. By the way, Lamborghini's competitor, Ferrari, offers a plug-in hybrid already, and another supercar brand, McLaren, has one coming soon. Google had a ton of announcements at its big annual developers conference this year. For example, Google showed off something called Project Starline. It's a high-tech video chat booth that makes the person you're talking to appear in front of you in 3D. To do that, it uses high-resolution cameras and depth sensors to capture a person from different perspectives. But that's still just being tested. It's not available to buy just yet. 
Another one expected to launch this year is a health tool that could help you identify skin, hair, or nail conditions. You take a picture of the problem, like a rash, answer some questions about symptoms, and it pulls up a list of things it might be. That said, it's not really meant to diagnose a problem, just give you some ideas. Some of Google's existing products are getting upgrades, too. For example, Google Photos is adding a feature to let you store some pictures in a password-protected folder. And Google is adding a way for you to change stored website passwords right in its password manager without having to go to each site. Plus, it's making some changes to Google Maps. It's upgrading its Live View tool that can help you navigate the world through augmented reality. The idea is it lets you browse a street or certain businesses like restaurants remotely. And those are just a few of the many new announcements from Google. And that's it for the main news today, but now it's time for Work Wednesday, when we break down one interesting career or work-related news story every Wednesday. But first, a quick break for our sponsor. Rothy's believes style is about more than just fashion. From slip-on sneakers and classic flats to chic handbags and spacious totes, Rothy's makes getting dressed easy and does it all with 100% recycled materials like thread spun from, get this, plastic water bottles. And here's another amazing aspect of Rothy's shoes. They're fully machine washable. That's right, no need to worry about spills or dirt. Just throw them in the washing machine and they'll come out looking brand new. Rothy's are extremely durable and last wash after wash. In fact, the average pair of Rothy's has walked about a thousand miles. That's like walking from San Francisco to Denver and staying comfortable with every step. That's why I never have to worry about throwing on my nice Rothy's flats for any occasion, even just a walk to the park. If they get dirty, I have no stress. I know I can make them fresh and clean in no time. We all deserve shoes and bags that can keep up with our busy, active lives, right? So keep it clean with cute, washable shoes and bags from Rothy's. Head to rothys.com slash newsworthy to find your new favorites today. That's R-O-T-H-Y-S, rothys.com slash newsworthy. Okay, now back to Work Wednesday. It's graduation season, and millions of new college grads are entering the workforce at a pretty interesting time. There are a record number of job openings, but there's also a lot of competition. The class of 2021 will be going up against millions of people who were laid off in the last year, as well as the 2020 grads who started looking for jobs in the worst of the pandemic. That being said, certain skill sets are in high demand. Some of the industries looking for new entry-level talent include finance, tech, manufacturing, and healthcare. Specifically, graduates looking for jobs as software developers, accountants, and data analysts should be able to find them. A new report from LinkedIn says the career with the highest expected salary for an entry-level position is software engineering. New grads could receive six figures as a specialist. Where they launch their careers could matter, too. The site Wallet Hub scored nearly 200 cities based on livability and job market strength. The cities listed in the top five include Salt Lake City, Utah, Orlando, Florida, Atlanta, Georgia, Austin, Texas, and Columbia, South Carolina. All right, thank you so much for listening today, and thank you for continuing to share the show. We'll catch you up on more news to know tomorrow. Until then, have a great day. 